Welcome everybody to the terminology leading practice stream of SNOMED CT Expo 2022. My name is Rory Davidson and I'm the CIO at SNOMED International uh, and I'll be moderating today's session. Now, all questions will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. Uh, all those online, please use the Q&A box to type your questions to the presenter and anybody in the room, please raise your hands and I'll pass the microphone around. I'm now very pleased to introduce John Grimes um, from CSIRO, who will be presenting Developing New User Interfaces for Expression Constraint Language Queries. Over to you, John. Thanks very much for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. This is my first SNOMED CT Expo, in person anyway. Um, and thanks very much to the other speakers for their excellent presentations. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about my experiences um, trying to build a new tool for visualizing and building expression constraint language queries. So the, um, the main things I'm going to cover in my presentation today are the type of problem I'm trying to solve here. Um, what was the motivation to, to do this new implementation? Um, the different parts of the approach that I took, um, a selection of the features of the implementation. And I also just want to talk a little bit about um, accessibility, which is um, a theme that I chose to focus on as part of this. And also any um, what the plans are now, um, now that we've got a bit of a prototype um, where do we take it from here? So rather than um, explain to you what ECL is, which I think other speakers have done quite a, a good job of, I just thought it would might, might be a good refresher to talk about some of the use cases that ECL is used for. And um, it's actually grown up into to being, you know, um, an extremely sort of useful sort of Swiss Army knife of a tool for using um, SNOMED CT. Um, uh, obviously, starting with um, definition of intentional reference sets and value sets, um, you know, when we want to bind SNOMED CT into an information model, how do we describe um, valid subsets of concepts? Um, but also things like data validation and cleansing, uh, transforming data, mapping between code systems, um, and my favorite use case, of course, which is um, using it within data analytics for um, advanced patient cohort selection and aggregation. Um, but really anything that requires a definition of a set of SNOMED concepts, um, ECL is the tool you want to be using. So why do we need a user interface for ECL? Or why do we need another user interface for ECL? So, um, ECL has a, has a textual form, and in fact, a lot of people have actually become quite familiar with that textual form, quite comfortable with it, and it is a, a very nice, um, concise um, um, form. Um, so, but building a user interface is, I think, about participation. So, you know, um, not everyone... Um, likes to talk to computers in the same way um, and some and some people are different are comfortable with different types of of tools so we absolutely can continue to improve that story around textual manipulation of ecl we can build better tools around augmenting that text editing experience through autocomplete um, validation contextual help and that sort of thing and we absolutely should but i think we also need um, pure user interface options as well and i think these these things can um can coexist and and complement each other and be used with each other um, so one of the, um, the, the primary design goals I, I came into this with was to sort of improve the ability to round trip ECL from and to this visual form. Um, so we can sort of start from a blank canvas and build up an ECL expression from scratch. Um, and then we end up with a textual representation, and then we can use that in other tools. But some, and sometimes you want to come the other way. So you've already got existing ECL expressions that you want to modify. So you want to bring that in, convert that into a visual representation, and then get back another textual representation. And in fact, that's how this tool works, basically. Um, the visual representation creates a textual representation, which then 
creates the next update of the visual representation. So that's a nice feature of it, which I hope is going to sort of increase the flexibility and utility of the of the tool. So just just in general, um, um, when we're building web applications, it's often useful to take a component centric approach. So if you can think of an entire application and break that up into smaller and smaller components that can to a, can to a level be um, uh, sort of encapsulated and then potentially reused. So I thought one idea is that we can basically take this entire builder and sort of break it up into components that can be reused not only within the builder, but also potentially outside of the builder and across um, different applications. So that's that's another aspect of, of, the, um, of the approach that I've taken. And that's a pretty common sort of pattern within web application development. So how did we actually go about um, taking this textual representation and converting it into a, a visual representation? So with the help of, you know, the excellent grammar that has been sort of authored by um, SNOMED um, International, which describes the structure of ECL and the meaning of all the elements in ECL, we um, created a parser, which is a thing that knows how to split up a textual expression into its component parts. So it can take something like this and start to split it up. Okay, now we've we've got a, a concept reference separated by a colon with an attribute refinement, and then further split that up so that within that we've got a constraint, we've got our descendants and self, and we've also got a comparison there between an attribute name and an attribute value, and further split that up until now we're sort of right at the primitive level of the um of the grammar and then we can sort of start to create components that can both visually represent those things and allow a user to edit them and change them so you know in the case of a concept reference it might be an autocomplete where we can look up a code um, in the case of a, an operator it might be a selection of all the different valid operators and then we can work our way back up the tree. So now, then we, once we have those lower level components, we can start to compose them into higher level components. For example, a component that represents an attribute in its entirety, um, or, a, or a component that represents a sub-expression with all the potential modifications to that sub-expression. And then coming right back up to the top of the tree, we can compose all those components into the, a representation of the, the full expression and then have that expression report back to us what its latest idea of the textual representation is. So of course, um, one of the most important parts of anything like this is being able to um, select concepts out for inclusion within the expression and um and of course um that that's a, a, a um sort of necessary feature of this and we've created a an autocomplete very similar to other implementations for that um, purpose um and also as you um want to modify concepts within different parts of the expression they might have different meanings depending on where they are so you um, want that context to be fed into the search so that when you're selecting say a reference set um, following a member of operator you really only want to set, select from reference sets rather than any co um, concept in snowmed or it might be the name of an attribute if you're doing an attribute refinement. Um, again, context matters. So you need to present the user um, with controls to build the valid elements at different appropriate points within the expression. So you need to be able to um, build up from scratch um, and 
and guide the user. And a lot of the value of having a user interface is that you can see the options. You can see the valid options at each point within the context. And that saves you sort of context switching. Okay, now I'm going to go and look at the documentation, see what all the different things are and figure out what I'm going to do. In, in, in a way, a user interface is an on-rails experience, which um, not only ensures the validity of the, the resulting expression, but it also um, makes it easier in, in the sense that it shows you what is possible um, at each step along the way. And the other advantage of this sort of grammar-based, component-based approach is that um, we, we sort of get this property that we can handle complex nested expressions. As long as we cater for the main elements of the grammar, we can deal um, nicely with complex expressions that involve a lot of nesting and sub-expressions and expressions within expressions. Yeah. So in terms of accessibility, um, so accessibility is a concept that we talk about um, within um, software engineering as um, the design of products that are usable by people with disabilities. And um, a, a, a um, very closely related concept is this concept of universal design, which is um, a principle for designing products that can be used by the broadest possible group of people. Um, and I thought this was kind of quite relevant to this exercise because that's exactly what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to put tools in people's hands that make it easier for people who aren't necessarily, you know, um, experts in ontologies and medical informatics to be able to participate at some level within this really important work of designing systems, designing um, data structures that we use in healthcare. And, um, and it's very easy to actually build in biases to the design of our software systems, which mean that we actually get a very skewed group of people who are doing those sorts of activities. And, and those um, decisions that that group of people take actually have massive flow on effects into the way healthcare software actually is designed and affects people. And it goes to things like health equity uh, healthcare equity and the other thing is that um i don't know what it's like um <laughs> over here but back home we have a cute shortage of um of skills in this area so anything we can do to sort of increase the, the size of the group that can participate in this sort of stuff is going to hopefully alleviate that sort of thing so the types of things that we need to think about when we're um designing accessible software is that not everybody interacts with a computer in the same way. Like your typical person, you know, has a mouse, has a keyboard and their eyes and they can um, go for it. Um, but, you know, some people are visually impaired. Some people use different um, devices to interact with their computer. Um, it might just be keyboard only, it might be like pedals or um, other devices um, that make it easier for them in their particular um, situation to interact with a computer. And it's actually super easy to, um, to make life a thousand percent easier for these people um, just by doing a few easy things, you know, like structuring um, the markup of your web page so that tools can immediately understand what the different regions of that user interface are um, allowing people to navigate through the interface using a keyboard only. Um, when when you are uh, when you are making sure that they can do this, it's very important that you can always see where you're up to within the user interface. So if you're tabbing through an interface, you need to be able to see where the current focus is. And you need to be considerate about where you put that focus each time you take an action. So, you know, if you add something new, don't, don't bump me right back to the start of the page. Put me where I'm, I'm going to do my next action sort of thing. Um, and also always provide alternatives to visual content. You know, like an icon um, 
even just due to things like um, cognitive diversity um, and cultural um, diversity might not mean anything to your user. So always provide an alternative, a textual alternative is gonna greatly improve their ability to understand what that might mean. Always ensure that you know content is zoomable, can be can work with different screen sizes, um, which is uh, a huge issue these days. And and lay off anything fancy. You know, fancy animations are are great, but they can actually be not just disruptive, but they can actually break the whole experience for some people um, uh, with with particular conditions. So this is just uh, a, a quick um, video of the prototype in action. And I'm just um, searching for a concept here and doing an attribute refinement. And I'm actually exclusively using the keyboard to navigate through this, um, through this interface just to demonstrate that um, aspect of it. And, um, and it's calling out to a fire terminology server to do a, a value set expansion based on um based on uh either the full snowbed or ecl based on the context within the expression here i'm adding a, a an attribute that i don't want so then i can then remove that region of the expression and here i'm um, adding another attribute group and um which which will be combined with the other group using uh, a boolean operator so once we've um, we've finished adding um, that that last um, attribute, that will then be translated back into a textual um, representation of the expression, and we'll also be able to see the the results. Um, so we'll select hypertrophy here, and now we can scroll down and see that we've we've got those um, results, which again we've executed using a fire terminology server to get the results of that ECL expression, and we've got a textual representation. And here I'm um, making a change to this um, expression. Here I'm taking one of these um, uh, attribute values and adding sort of you know and star or whatever. And just to demonstrate that, you know, that will flow back into the visual representation at which you can then um, continue to modify. So you're welcome to try it out. Um, it's, it's, as you say, it's, it's a prototype. It's still a bit rough, um, but we're, we're, we're planning to continue to work on it. Um, so um, yeah, feel free to, Give it a go and, um, and let us know how you go. <laughs> Hang on, I'll take a picture of you. <laughs> um, so future work. Um, obviously, um, it'd be great if we could um, get this to more or less full coverage of the specification. Um, internationalization is another thing that I'd, I'd like to work on. So we've already got the capability through the power of SNOMED to um, come to bring back uh, the, the descriptions, the preferred terms that are the correct language for what your browser is set up for. But the next step of internationalization would be to take um, all the labels and um, text within the actual user interface itself and actually translate that into a set of languages that covers most people. Um, the other thing is um, MRCM integration would, would be great so that we could constrain at each point of um, the expression what the valid um, selections might be. And there's a good example of that, for example, in Kai's um, uh, ECL builder. Um, but also, um, what could we apply this sort of approach to that's um, beyond ECL? Um, so we could obviously take this almost unaltered and, and, and use it for the compositional grammar. So for example, if you wanted to um, capture post-coordinated expressions within a user interface. And the other um, idea I have is to um, apply this to fire path. So in the context of data analytics with fire, um, we could have a, an expression builder like this, which would, for example, allow you to 
say, you know, um, give me all the um, ED encounters within the last month that have a fracture of the lower limb um, and um, give me the counts across facility or whatever. Um, and we could wrap that all in a, in a larger expression builder, which actually drills into ECL at the appropriate points, which are the coded concepts within the information model and create a, a, um, a visual interface for querying the fire information model um, that with, with SNOMED CT codings within it. So that's, that's another area I'd like to explore. Thank you for, for your attention um, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, John. Excellent presentation. Um, so we'll now take some questions. If you have any here, please raise your hand and I'll come around to you with a microphone. Any questions up? <laughs> So for, for people that are looking to use ECL to manage value sets, so you've got an export mechanism that that you might, after you create your ECL from this, that you're able to export the results of that into a, into a value set type format? Yeah, so currently we've got two buttons. One is just copy the ECL, and the other one is copy a fire value set URI, which is the way of telling a, a fire terminology server the implicit SNOMED um, value set that you're um, wanting to use. So you can go to Snowstorm with that, for example, and say, give me the expansion of the codes within this value set that I just authored using the, the builder. Thank you, John, for a great presentation. I really appreciate the uh, tools that can help uh, people who don't who are scared of syntaxes to construct uh, expression uh, constraints. And I, I would even like uh, on your list here, and maybe it goes in line with the internationalization aspect, but the, to do this and to use your tool, it still requires you to know SNOMED, the SNOMED CT concept model. It still requires you to know what an attribute, what this type, type of attribute is used for. Um, and the same for the, the values that you use. So I was wondering if you have been thinking about, because I can see you use like the long term, instead of using the symbols, you use like the description to help it, the human readability, but can we do even more? Can we make it even more use of Bentley? Can we help the end users to know that, okay, when I'm expressing that, I want to apply a body size or a laterality. So instead of having to, to understand what these attributes mean, can we in some way help them to find the right thing? So did you, have you any thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that's a really um, good area for further development um, in that sort of um, contextual assistance, I suppose. And I've already sort of, Kylan's been helping me a little bit um, with how we might communicate some of the more esoteric jargon that sort of accompanies um, Snow and CT because it is really hard to just translate things like, um, you know, the constraint operators or, or, um, or, you know, yeah, what an attribute is just using a very um, concise text thing, but maybe we can sort of have contextual help and also like visual um, explanations of what those things mean that can can um, you know come um, at the right time within the context of the user interface? So I'd love to work on that. Um, I realise you're probably a bit frustrated because you had to record your demo, and <laughs> the question I asked may be awkward about the software. Um, I noticed when using the autocomplete text boxes that the first item said Snowman CT selected. Could you explain that? Yeah, so, um, and and I've, I've been playing a bit around with it and I'm by no means um, final, but the way I've, I've got it is I wanted to show um, the fact that, because once, once you start typing, you lose what you already had selected. So you kind of want to see what you previously had selected, then options what you want to change and then potentially any concept. Um, so that was just my way of sort of preserving that context when you get into that state. But um, 
yeah, it's um, there could be a number of different ways of doing that. Yeah. Just wanted to let those Yeah, no, it's just yeah. Any other questions? Oh, oh, you're, oh you're here. <laughs> um, one of the features of ECL is that you can create deeply nested, quite complex and powerful expressions, um, but they they're equally difficult to comprehend, um, maintain, and, and so forth. Um, and then if you're editing multiple expressions, maybe you're doing similar things over time. Um, have you given any thought to um, breaking, uh, decomposing, I guess, expression uh, construction? Uh, absolutely, because I was inspired by your ECL builder, Michael, in that respect. Um, yeah, so no, that's 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 one of my favorite features of the Shrimp ECL builder actually is that you can um you can basically create an ECL snippet if you like, and then you can refer to it um in another ECL expression. This is a really great way of managing um uh you know the, the complexity of ECL expressions, which do get extremely large and unwieldy if you're doing any sort of real world thing. So I think that's a, an essential feature, absolutely. Okay, and in that case, there's no online questions. So we conclude the session. Uh, thank you very much, John. All right.